In this video, you will learn everything about all the features offered by Cursor, how to create perfect prompts, how to manage project file structures, make your code reusable and manageable, and handle the errors in the code generated by Cursor AI. You will learn all of this practically while we build a clone of TinyPNG application. If you are not familiar with Cursor AI, it's an AI-powered code editor that's rapidly gaining popularity. Visual Studio Code is open source and Cursor is a fork of Visual Studio Code. So it's almost similar to Visual Studio Code but with AI tools integrated on top of it. This AI native tool enables almost anyone to build applications. You can go to cursor.com and click on download for free to download this application. After you have logged in, you will see a window like this. Now this is somewhat similar to Visual Studio Code and this is where you need to create your projects to use Cursor. Now first let's go through the pricing. So there is a free version which includes 2000 completions and 50 slow premium requests and 200 Cursor small uses. And then there is a monthly plan for $20. So what are premium models? GPT-4, GPT-4O and Claude 3.5 Sonnet are all considered premium models. You have 500 fast uses and unlimited slow uses each month for these models. Now before moving forward, we need to look at a couple of settings. For that you can go to File, go to Preferences and click on Cursor Settings. In General Settings, you will see this section Rules for AI. Now here you can define the rules and restrictions that cursor should adhere to while proposing and making any changes to your project. For example, you can say always use functional react, never use unwrap in Rust, always output your answers in Portuguese and so on. You can build restrictions around the language or the structs or the file structure etc. And whatever rules you define here will be applicable to all the projects that you build inside cursor. Now there is a better way of doing that because these rules may vary per project. So what you can do is you can create a file with the name dot cursor rules in the root directory of your project. And then you can define the rules over there and those rules will be applicable to only that project. Next you will see the privacy mode. Now if it is on, none of the code will be stored with cursor. And if it is off, your prompts and your telemetry data may be saved by cursor. You would want to keep it enabled. In the model settings, you will see all the models which are supported by cursor and you can enable and disable the models that you don't want cursor to use. You can even add your own model by clicking on add model and providing the model name. If you already have API keys for OpenAI, Anthropic, Google and Azure, you can plug those API keys over here and you can start using your existing accounts instead of paying to cursor. Next, you will see the Composer. Now, Composer is one of the most important and interesting feature in Cursor and you would want to keep it enabled. We'll go through what it is and how to use it while building our project. Next, you will see code base indexing and you would want to keep it enabled. It will index your entire project. And the thing to note is all code is stored locally. So nothing to worry about here. Next, you'll see a section for docs. Now here you can add your own docs and you can refer these docs in your prompts. Next you will see chat, editor and terminal. The default settings are good enough but if you want you can go through these and change. What I like most about cursor is that it is so powerful but the learning curve to use it is just so small. You just need to learn these four concepts that you can learn in just five minutes and start building amazing real world projects. These features are tab, command K or control K on Windows, chat and composer. We will go through each of these concepts in the next few minutes while we build the clone of TinyPNG. You must have used this website at some point of time to reduce the size of your images. All this website does is it compresses the images and gives you an image with reduced size. We will use next.js to build our application. Next.js is a JavaScript framework that helps developers build web applications using React. Though we can get straight to the cursor and ask it to build the entire application and it will give a bunch of files and code and most probably we will be able to run that application. But in that case, we won't have the complete control over the structure of the project. The project won't be easy to manage, especially if we expect the project to grow big in future. So that is tip number one. We want to have the full control over the structure of our project 
and to do that we should take control and build the initial project ourselves and then use cursor to build individual features inside our project now to get started with the next.js application and to just to get the boilerplate code we can go to next.js and here we can run this command npx create next app at the rate latest it will ask a bunch of questions what kind of application we want to create etc we can just hit yes and we will have a very basic hello world application created for us i will run that command npx create next app at the rate latest and it will create our project in just a few seconds and it is done now to run this basic application all we need to do is execute this command in the terminal npm run dev now to run this application first we need to change the directory over here so let's open this entire project tinypng-clone in a new cursor window so i'll run cursor and tinypng looks like this path is not set if you see this error, you can press Ctrl Shift P or on Mac, you can press Command Shift P and just search for shell. And here click on shell command install cursor command. And it says shell command cursor successfully installed. And after doing that, we need to restart the cursor application. So let's close this window and reopen it. And now if we run cursor tiny PNG clone, it will open up a new window with our project. And this is the new window. Now let's open the terminal. And here, let's run this command over here. And it says the application is now running on localhost 3000. Let's open it in the browser. And here we have it. Now before moving forward, let's set some rules for our project. Let's go to the settings. And as we discussed earlier, we can set the rules at the project level by creating a file dot cursor rules let's create the file here now what i did is i took a screenshot of this directory structure here and then i went to the perplexity you can even use chat gpt and i shared this directory structure and i asked it to give a set of rules that i can put in the readme that clearly says how to maintain the project structure where to put ui components backend api endpoints other sources and so on and it gave me this entire project structure guidelines so I'll copy all these guidelines, go back to the project and paste them here. Now it contains everything. And now all of these rules will be followed in each prompt that we give to the cursor. Now let's talk about tab. Cursor's tab feature is like a psychic coding buddy right at your fingertips inside your ID. Once enabled, the tab feature in cursor is constantly working behind the scenes. It's analyzing your existing code and predicting the next move. So let me give you an example. If I start typing export, then it is suggesting me default home. Let's say I keep typing default function and then the function name, let's say it's get data from S3. And now it is suggesting multiple lines of code. Now I can accept this by pressing tab. We can even select the code and click on edit or we can press control K. And here we can give instructions on how to change this function. So let's say if I give the instruction Update the function to fetch data from S3 and save the data in a local map. It will update the function. It is making all of these changes. And now we can either accept this change or we can reject it. And now if you see any error over here, you can simply hover over the error and click on AI fix in chat. Just click on this and it will start a chat. And in this chat, it will explain what the error is and how to fix it. Now it is saying that we need to install AWS SDK. And here we have this button run we can click on run and install this package right away and then we can apply this code change as well now let's talk about command k or control k in windows you can click in any file and just press control k and you'll see this small window here you can change the underlying large language model and then you can just give any instruction let's say i give the instruction add comments for get data from s3 and then it will just add the comments we can accept or reject these changes. You can even select a piece of code and click on edit, which is equivalent to control K. And then you can give the instructions here. Control K is also available in the terminal. Now there is no need to go through long man pages on Google. 
you can simply ask what commands you need to run in the terminal itself. So you can click in the terminal and then press Ctrl K or Command K on Mac. And then you'll see this small window. Now let's say I want to run this application. So I can ask how to run this application. And here it has put down the command that we need to run. It really simplifies the terminal stuff. This feature is just awesome. Next feature is chat. Its chat functionality gives you a way to directly interact or ask questions to LLM inside the IDE itself. And this is not just another sidebar chat window. Cursor understands what file you are in and where your cursor is. It's like chatting with a dev who is looking at your screen. To open the chat window, you can click on this button at the top or you can press Ctrl L or Command L on Mac. And then you can simply select any file or you can go to any file and just put your cursor somewhere. And then you can ask any question here without adding any additional context because the cursor is aware of where you are currently. So if I ask explain this function, then it has the context of where I am and which function I'm referring to. And it is explaining get data from S3. Now the interesting part is we can add additional context to this window. We can click on plus and we can add additional files. If your file is not showing up here, you can start typing the name of your file. Let's say package.json. So it is showing up here. We can even add image over here. So we can click on image and select the image that we want to use. So if we type add the rate, it gives us the option to refer to all of these different resources, files, folders, code, web, docs, git, and code base. Add the rate files references entire files in your project. Add the rate folders reference entire folders. Add the rate code references specific sections of your code. So if I use add the rate code, and then I can select various functions. Add the rate git allows us to add git commits, diffs, or pull requests to our prompt. Add the rate code base lets cursor scan our entire code base for context. Add the rate web allows us to reference the web URLs. And now finally, let's talk about the most interesting feature, Composer. Now while tab, chat, command K are great for writing and editing code, Composer just takes it to a next level. Composer is capable of creating your entire feature or even your entire application, if it is small, in just a single prompt. It is capable of making changes across multiple files at once. It is like an AI architect that understands not just your code, but how all the pieces fit together, your UI, your backend and all the other stuff. To use Composer, you can press Ctrl I on Windows and Command I on Mac. And you'll see a window like this. You can reference all the different components that we just talked about in the chat. So you can type at the rate and you'll see all of these options. So I'll clean up this code. And now let's build our tiny PNG application. Though you can give all the instructions here in this window itself, but a better way of doing that is to create a new requirements directory in the project and then create a frontend.md inside it. And then we'll put down all the details of our project and the features. And then we can simply pass this file in the prompt to Composer. Now to build this frontend.md, what I did is I went to the Composer and here I gave this prompt. I want to build a clone of TinyPNG using React.js but with basic functionality of compressing images. I want the UI to be exactly similar. What libraries should I use for image compression? I want to pass the detailed requirements for both UI and backend to the developer. Give me the detailed requirements. And it gave me all of these requirements and the libraries that we can use. And I simply copy pasted all of these here in frontend.md. Now we can give the reference of this entire code base and give this prompt to the composer. Build the application with all the required features using instructions in frontend.md. Now it has made changes to these files and it is asking us to install this package. Let's copy this and run it in our terminal. And these packages are installed. Now let's accept all these changes. And these are accepted and I don't see any error here in these files. Now let's run the application. And go to the UI. 
And here we see this error. Now you can expect to see these kind of errors while using cursor. And the tip number two is, you can copy these errors from here, go back to the cursor and paste your error here in the composer. You may need to repeat this process a couple of times until all of your errors are resolved. And it looks like it has fixed these issues. Let's click on accept all. And let's go back to the UI. And this is how the UI is looking like. I'll, I'll drag an image in this section and I see that it is getting uploaded. It is not showing the compressed one. Let's see if the download is working fine. And yes, I was able to download it. Now we need to fix a couple of things here. Now to do that, we can take a screenshot of this UI. Go back to the composer and give this prompt. This is how UI is looking like. It is not showing the compressed image and UI is not looking good. And it has made all the changes. Let's accept them and go back to the UI. Refresh this and this is how it looks like now. Let's drag another image and this is how it looks like now. It is showing both the original and the compressed one. And there is a button to download the compressed image and it is working fine. And the size of the image is also getting reduced from 400 KB to 352 KB. We are even able to click on this section and select the image from here. Now this is pretty awesome. In just a few minutes, we have been able to build this really simple application to compress the images without any knowledge of how the images are getting compressed and any knowledge of how next.js works and without creating any sort of backend endpoints. And we can keep improving the UI with more and more prompts like this. Let's have a quick recap of the important tips and practices. First, always try to control the structure of your project by yourself. And use cursor to build features face by face, instead of trying to create the entire project from scratch in a single prompt. Second, make use of dot cursor rules file. Create this file in the root directory and define your coding practices and the file structure that you want cursor to follow every time. Third, instead of describing your entire feature or the entire application directly inside the prompt window, try to create a detailed description of your features and save them on files like frontend.md and then give reference of these files in your prompts. Fourth, if you see errors in your UI or in your files, just copy paste the error and and paste it back in the composer or the chat window and rinse and repeat until you end up clearing all the errors. And fifth, keep saving and committing your changes time to time whenever you hit a checkpoint so that if something goes wrong, you are able to revert back to your previous working changes. In the next video, I'll show you how to use V0 and cursor to create a full stack production level application and deploy it in cloud. So stay tuned for that application. And if you haven't subscribed the channel yet, do subscribe and hit the bell icon so that you don't miss any updates. Please leave your thoughts in the comment section below and any other topics that you want me to cover in the future videos. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.